Hi guys, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Short video today. Uh, these are uh, this video is to showcase some of our new spring solenoids. Uh, they're neat for door openers. Uh, you can use servos, but you can use solenoids as well. Uh, I'm just going to show you a how to use them and talk a little bit about how much uh, power they they require to work. Same with if you've never seen a solenoid before. The neat thing is about, about this one is it's got it comes with its own spring, so it springs back out. So what happens is if I apply power, <laughs> it pops back out. What happens is it basically becomes the the module becomes uh, magnetized. It's just a big coil inside, and uh, what it does is it, it pulls this down with a good strong force at 12 volts. Um, and when you release power, it comes back out. Now, if you don't have something stopping it, what will happen is it'll fly out like it just did. But at 12 volts, it takes about 700 milliamps. Now, I just held it down so that it wouldn't fly out. Now, like a relay coil, uh, what happens is as soon as you, uh, if you as soon as you disengage the power, the the magnetic field. Uh, collapses and that creates a nice big voltage spike which can ruin or at least harm your circuitry which is why there's a little diode here the uh... i'm not sure how well you can see it but there's a white side of the diode on this side and the black side the black side is uh... the positive side the anode the side with the white stripe is the cathode or negative you want to make sure that the negative is actually facing your your five volts or your twelve volt supply and that the positive the anode is facing the uh, negative. This is this will just uh, this will ensure that the spike any spike uh, higher than 12 volts will be dissipated along the uh, the diode. It's a protective device. It's a diode shunt. Anyway, so what you do is you would you would place that along your power line. Now you could use a relay to drive your uh, your solenoid. You can use a FET. If you're just using it to be on or off, or on for you know under 10 seconds, then you can have it on as on a duty cycle of well 100. You can you can basically keep it on for more than you know 10 15 seconds. You're not going to hurt anything. However, if you keep it on for a long period of time, the solenoid gets very hot because it's just a coil of wire and there's a lot of power going along it, you know, being dissipated along it. So what you need is, uh, if you're going to have it on for long periods of time, you need to use a FET, and you need to pulse the FET at a duty cycle of uh, 10, I'd say it's about 10 to 30 percent. But I think most of you would probably be using this to be on, off for a short, you know, on for a short period of time. Just saying, if you have it on for a very long period of time, eventually it's going to do damage to it. I didn't say for minutes or more. I've done some tests, and what happens is the whole module, I've kept it on for about five minutes, and the whole module gets extremely hot. And after you power it off, it takes a long time for that heat to, to uh, for the device to cool down. Anyway, um, this is, will be available at uh, engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. Just wanted to show it off to you. What, what it comes with is, uh, it comes with the module, the plunger with the spring already on it, and I'll be uh, including a diode just, you know, so you guys can make sure that your circuitry is safe. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I, uh, these, are my f these are pretty awesome. I'll, I'll just uh, power it on and I'll pop it off for you again. Whee! <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, have a great day.